Welcome to this edition of Valor Media. This is episode number 67 for May 17th, 2021, and I'm your host, Mark Appenzeller. Today, I am bringing you an installment in our Valor Excel series, where we share strategies with you from the realm of Valor Ministries that pertains to operational excellence. And that's something that we take very seriously at Valor. We want to do everything that we do in excellence. We want to do things to the highest level of skill and ability that we can. And maybe most importantly, we want to be able to learn from our mistakes. Because let's face it, every business makes mistakes. But the most important thing that we can do in learning from them is to also discover ways to avoid making them again. It's no fun stumbling into the same pothole time after time. And so in our businesses, we need to find ways to really develop a knowledge base. That's what Valor Excel is all about. The Valor Crisis and Training Center in its years of operation has had to figure out a lot And we want to be able to share that in meaningful ways with other businesses and organizations to help them in whatever they're pursuing. So today, I'm coming at this perspective of sharing things because it really does hit close to home in what the topic of today's episode is. The title I've selected for today is Clear as Mud. I love that expression. That's something my mom has said my entire life. There are other ways you can describe something, but clear as mud is a personal favorite of mine because let's face it, mud is anything but clear. And the reason why I'm calling this clear as mud is because I want to talk about the role that communication plays in the daily operation of our businesses. It doesn't matter if you're a global corporation, an LLC, a tiny nonprofit, or a lemonade stand. Every day you interact with somebody They come to you because they're seeking a service, and in providing that service to them, you also really need to concentrate on finding ways to communicate well, because if you don't, you're not doing your customer or client any favors, and in the long run, guess what? That means you're not doing yourself any favors either. Now, communication is one of those things that you talk about and people just kind of yawn, and I think that's a very telling response, because We dismiss communication as being, well, that's just too obvious, but it's anything but obvious, and that's a huge component in the problem. I think many businesses are convinced that they are good communicators when, in fact, they might be terrible communicators, and we get a little bit of attitude. We think that we're doing such a great job in conveying what we're about, and we may excel in a sales pitch, in a corporate presentation. But there's a lot more to successfully interacting with your client than just flashing some branding at them. That might get their attention, but it's nothing more than something shiny if you don't have something substantive to back it up. And that's where good, clear communication with your client or your customer comes into play. But my, 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 how many times do businesses seem to forget that? And as obvious as it seems, I really do believe that in this day and age, if you can grab hold of that concept, you'll have an amazing advantage over your competition because I think we take for granted the fact that we're good communicators. But communication is something that we have to be really intentional about. And if we're not, then we're presuming that we're doing a good job with it. And the danger there is that it's a gradual decline. If you don't already have good communication with your clients or customers, it won't magically improve. If anything, it will degrade over time because let's face it, the longer we do something, the more comfortable we get with the process, the less intentional we are about it. We presume that we know it inside and out, so that means it always works perfectly. Yeah, maybe not. Now, communication, again, is one of those things that we have to invest ourselves in. And that's part of the problem. Let's face it, we're all extremely busy in our jobs. We have 50 million demands on us each day. And communicating well, well, that takes extra time. And maybe that's extra time that you simply can't whittle out of all the time you need to spend doing those 50 million things. But I really don't think there's anything that has more bang for the buck than good, clear communication. Because at the end of the day, It really doesn't cost us anything, 
but the benefits are incalculable. Now, I'm saying all of this because I just went through a really unfortunate experience recently that proved again to me the validity of good communication in a business setting. Now, I was reaching out to a company to provide a service that involved me completing an application online and then uploading some digital files to them. Seems pretty straightforward. I specifically selected this company after a lot of research because I think deep research is critical in any business setting. Don't ever rush to the first thing. Always look at all the ins and outs and make a good, balanced, informed decision. Well, I did that. I felt confident in pursuing this company because I was recommended to them by yet another company that I routinely deal with that has a pretty sterling reputation. They were in partnership with this particular company, and so I felt, well, that sounds like a good match. I trust the big company, so the small company partnering with them is probably realistic. That's probably a fit that'll bring a good business experience for me. That's kind of the background of how I entered into all of this. Well, I got into the website for this company. I completed their online application, and I was highly impressed. It seemed really intuitive. It seemed very well designed. It walked me through all the steps. When there were choices or decisions that I needed to make, it explained things very well. And then we got through the application to the point where I would be uploading digital files to them. And that's where things began to break down. Now, it would have been bad enough if things got a little bit unclear at this point. But to add insult to injury, what ended up happening was they took me to a payment page. We had completed the application, but we hadn't completed the whole transaction. Because even beyond me paying them, I still needed to get these digital files uploaded to them. Well, everything else had been satisfactory up to that point. It took me to the payment page and I thought, okay, that's fine. So we went ahead, I put my credit card information in, and lo and behold, it indicated that the payment was received, and then it moved me on to the upload stage. Now, I had read in the preliminary information their instructions for the upload. Specifically, as part of this application, I was uploading 10 digital files. But their instructions told me to consolidate them into a compressed folder, a zipped file. They didn't say a separate zipped file for each one. They said a file. The implication was that all 10 of these should go into the one. So that's what I did. I got to the upload stage, clicked on this compressed folder, and I immediately received an error message that said, Upload failed. File too large. File size cannot exceed. And that's all it said. It didn't tell me the file size limit. It just said file size cannot exceed. Well, that's a big help. I tried it five or six more times, and every time I got to the same message. I looked around frantically trying to see if there were any instructions, but there was nothing beyond what I read originally. And now, in the context of this upload issue, those kind of skimpy instructions from earlier on were really doing me a disservice. I now realized that I needed to get some sort of online help from them, especially in light of the fact that they had just charged me $120 on my credit card. Well, that's where the real fun began. Now, I was doing this at about 11.30 at night, and I began to realize, oh, there's no toll-free phone number. There's no online help desk. A lot of times, you'll get those little automated chat dialogue boxes that pop up. There wasn't even one of those. After some rummaging, I finally did discover a section of the application that said, if you feel that your files did not upload properly, click here immediately. Well, the fact that they said immediately, heightened by the fact that they already charged my credit card 120 bucks, prompted me to do just that. I clicked there immediately, and it enabled me to open up an email, I'm presuming, to their support desk. I explained the nature of the problem, I clicked send, and I was told, thank you, someone will respond right away. 
Well, they obviously have a different definition of right away than I do, because I sat there beginning around midnight and spent an hour and a half waiting for some other response. I got nothing more than an automated email saying, request ID 3855 has been opened. Now, also in the middle of all of this, in my email account, I got an automatically generated email saying, congratulations, your application is complete. No, it's not because you charged me $120 and now I can't upload my digital files to you, which was the whole purpose of this transaction in the first place. Well, I looked around more and more and more, and the more I looked, the more I realized that all of the wonderful instruction that came in the early steps of this process was useless because when it really came down to the deal breaker, me getting my files to them to conduct the service I was paying them for, there simply was no support, no explanation. I followed exactly what they said to do, and now I was left high and dry. Well, needless to say, at this point, I completely lost confidence in them performing the service I sought them out for to begin with. So the next day, I requested that they cancel my application and refund my credit card. To their credit, they did just that. But what a shame. Because in the end, what could have been a good transaction and a happy business experience instead ended in disappointment. Because right at the moment I needed some clarity, they just handed me a fistful of mud. And as a result, I sought out a competitor of theirs, a competitor who charges a good bit more for the service, but who has an 800 number that enables me to reach out if something goes wrong. I didn't even like the interface of the more expensive company. It didn't guide me through those preliminary steps in a way that did it as well as the first company, but it was the simple fact that I could actually get in touch with someone if I needed to. And that's really what it comes down to. What are we communicating to the people that we're accepting business from? It's a two-way street. We need to be able to clearly communicate to them what our expectations of them are and also what their expectations from us should be. And in case something goes wrong, because invariably it will, we need to give very clear direction about what they should do. We should let them know specific real-world time frames to expect a response, and we should give them a plan B in case that all fails. But that's not what I got from that company. I had to laugh because while I was sitting for an hour and a half late at night, desperately hoping someone would reply and tell me what to do for the file uploads, I looked around their website and browsed through their FAQ. Now, we've all seen frequently asked questions. They're a great idea. They actually were originated at NASA back in the early 1980s by someone named Eugene Maya. And a lot of times they can have good application. But when I looked at their FAQs, they were kind of laughable. To me, they weren't really frequently asked questions. They were sort of restating the absolute obvious things that any client should have known. They weren't really addressing things that people would encounter, like I did, needing to get an answer late at night, needing to know what to do in a situation. And that kind of was an eye-opener to me. Because I think a lot of times businesses do that, particularly on websites. They'll have an FAQ. And, you know, I think after a while, it almost ends up becoming like that old game of telephone where you have a bunch of people in a circle. You start off whispering something in the first person's ear. And by the time it gets the whole way around, it's completely distorted into something else. Maybe their intentions are good and maybe they feel that they're providing you with something worthwhile. But if I'm sitting there late at night with a $120 charge on my credit card, I need answers. I need something that's more than clear as mud. When it gets right down to it, I really almost feel like FAQs don't even have a role on a website. If you're doing your job well as the company offering to provide me a service, You should anticipate what's needed to get that transaction taken care of, and you should build that into your policies. You should build it into the procedures that you're telling me to follow. Don't treat me like I work for your company because I don't. I'm the outsider. Whatever you guys figured out on the inside, you may know that it works like a million bucks, but I don't know that. And when you charge me 120 bucks and leave me hanging, then we have a problem. 
I basically have this philosophy. When you're communicating what needs to be done to a client, you need to take this approach. Don't treat me like I'm stupid, but don't expect me to understand all the inner workings, particularly of your technology, and anticipate that there may be things I run into that don't work perfectly the first go-round. And instead of letting me feel adrift, give me some reassurance, especially when my money is involved. That's something that we need to take into consideration in whatever we're doing in our businesses and organizations. Now, maybe what you do doesn't fall into that particular mold. But let's face it, that two-way exchange of expectations needs to happen clearly. I really encourage you as you develop whatever communication you're offering to the people you interact with as you do business, put yourself in their shoes. They want clarity. And if you can provide that to your customer, you will be the golden one. And everybody else will just be the mudslinger. Now, maybe you don't know where to start with that. And that's where Valor can actually help. Valor Excel is a division of Valor Ministries that really does focus on operational excellence. You can reach out to us at info at valorexcel.com and someone from our team will get back in touch with you to discuss opportunities to help you work in a way that really is smart. We presume the work we do is smart, but that doesn't automatically happen. We have to be intentional about it. Let Valor look at ways that we can interact with you to really increase the efficiency of what you do and to help you communicate clearly with the people you serve. I also invite you to visit our Facebook page, Valor Excel. And if you have suggestions for topics that you'd like us to discuss on future installments of this podcast, things that will really help you to succeed not only in your business but also in your personal life, you can contact us at info at thevalorcenter.org. Valor is committed to bringing high-quality tools to you to really help you thrive in your personal life and in your business. And if you're a nonprofit looking for that ever-elusive funding stream, the grant, I encourage you to check out a new product by visiting us at www.valorexcel.com training. It's the Face Your Fears Grants Writing Course conducted by our Executive Director, Lori Riston. It's an incredibly comprehensive instructional package that will tell you everything you need to do to pursue and write grants so that your organization can really reach not only for its mission, but for its long-term vision. If the Valor Media Podcast is an encouragement to you, and if you benefit from these episodes, would you consider benefiting us by financially contributing to us so that we can continue to bring you this type of content? If so, you can visit us at www.thevalorcenter.org and click on the Donate button to give securely online. Or you can send a check or money order to Valor Ministries, 324 East Antietam Street, Suite 104, Hagerstown, Maryland, 21740. I encourage you to subscribe to and like this podcast, and please share this with someone that you think would benefit from it. We publish a new episode each Monday, so I invite you to join us again next week. Until then, thanks for joining me today, and remember this, you were made to thrive.